I'm Anthony McNicholas. I'm the ethics chair for our school and for the college DCDI. And I want to talk to you today about research ethics, why they're important, how research ethics are organised at Westminster and what you have to do when you need to make an application. So, organisation. Each college has a research ethics committee. The university also has a central research ethics committee. And together we are responsible for making sure that all research undertaken in the university is done properly, safely, legally of course, and with due care and respect for all of those involved, whether human, animal, or indeed with due care and respect for the environment. The university has a moral and legal obligation to see that its employees and its students conduct themselves according to the highest standards and we, and the, through the various committees and your supervisors and module and course leaders, are here to help you do just that. So why are ethics important? Well, doing research is about finding out new things and therefore there is a degree of uncertainty involved and this can, can entail some sort of risk. The ethics process seeks to identify and to minimise that risk. Guidelines for the ethical conduct of research have been developed over the course of a large number of years. These have come mainly out of the field of medicine, but the same principles apply to other fields of research. So I'll give you an example of an early uh, um, piece of medical research, which, though it ultimately led to the eradication worldwide of a terrible disease, smallpox, was, shall we say, um, deficient when it came to ethical behaviour. So in 1796, Edward Jenner, an English doctor, injected in the course of some medical research an eight-year-old boy called James Phipps with cowpox. This was a disease which made people ill but wasn't fatal. He later injected him with smallpox, which most certainly was fatal. And the idea was to demonstrate that the original injection of cowpox had given the boy protection from smallpox. Now, that simply could not happen today. The same kind of research is, of course, being done. I mean, at the moment, very urgently, as we are searching for a vaccine for COVID-19. But it could not be done in such a way as to risk somebody's life. You are not, I trust, going to be doing work which is potentially life-threatening either to you or to anyone else. But what you have to do is to imagine how your work could cause any kind of risk to anybody, either when you're doing the research or afterwards when you're writing about it or disseminating the results of your research. So what do you do if you have to make an application for research ethics? Everyone doing a dissertation or a final project has to apply for ethics clearance. You do this by filling in a form called an application for research ethics. You should consult with your supervisor when filling it in. That's very important. If you are an undergraduate, then your supervisor will access the form for you on the virtual research environment, the VRE, and send you a copy. And then they will upload it if it's necessary. If you are a postgrad, you will be able to access the VRE um, yourself. The form comes in two parts, A and B. Everybody has to fill in part A of the form. For most of you, that will be it. Your supervisor or module leader will check that all is in order and they will approve it. Depending on how you answer the questions in part A, however, you may then have to fill in part B. This will require you to answer more questions and provide more information and it might then have to be passed on to our college committee or even to the University Research Ethics Committee for approval. What's important here is that the process can take some time as applications are passed backwards and forwards from the applicant to the committee and back again for revision before ultimate permission can be given. So it's vitally important that you seek ethical approval right at the start of your dissertation or final project because we do not give approval retrospectively. It has to be obtained before you do any research. So as soon as you know what you're going to do, put in an application and make sure, as I said, that you consult with your supervisor and or module leader when you do it. Thank you.